Hi friends, I'm Jimmy Snow and I wanted to tell you about something that's getting ready to take place that I feel is very significant when we're dealing with prophecy, the Bible. And I've already talked about the uh, Revelation 12 sign that will be taking place on the 23rd day of September. But before that takes place, we're going to have a solar eclipse. Now, I'm not going to try to tell you the Lord is coming back. I always want people to understand that. I don't know. Uh, I want to be sure to let you know that. But boy, there are significant things transpiring right now that are totally different. And um, I don't have time to deal with all of it, but I want to encourage you to watch my program, uh, Journey Through the Bible, that comes on my main time at 9.30 on Sunday nights, Central Time. And to let you know, I will be expanding this quite a bit. But I just want to give you some sniblets right quick, just little things to hopefully create a desire for you to tune us in. According to the 14th verse of Genesis chapter 1, remember what God said, He was going to place the sun and the moon and the stars in the heavens as signs. And the Hebrew word right there, mo'adim, that I've mentioned so many times on my program, which actually means, when you look at it, appointed times. He'll, he'll go on to tell us that these appointed times are for seasons, years, months, and days. And that is also a, a nice little Hebrew word, oath, like O-T-H if you spell it in English, which means likewise proofs or warnings or signals. So he's telling us that these appointed times are very special that he's going to place there. I want you to read, I don't have the time to do it this, this trip, but over in Luke's Gospel, chapter 21, 25 through 36, need to read what the Lord says about these signs when he talks about the moon and the stars and the sun. And he goes on telling us about some things that will transpire at the time of the end. And one of those things is a sign. Could it be that the Revelation 12 is one of those signs? Could it also be possible, by the way, that the solar eclipse will likewise be a sign? And I want to go into this just slightly with you a little bit, because the solar eclipse will take place on the 21st day of the month of August, which on the Hebrew calendar is Elul 1, like the first day of the month of Elul. That's a Hebrew month, by the way, and it's very significant. Now, when this solar eclipse takes place, it's going to go from Oregon. It'll pass through Carbondale, Illinois, and St. Louis, Missouri, right here in my city of Nashville on its way to South Carolina. It'll be approximately 70 miles wide. That means the shadow of it as it passes through these areas. Almost a straight line will be exactly 70 miles wide. It's a hundred years before it will happen again, approximately. That means it's a one-time occurrence. If you see it, you'll probably never live to see another one because it doesn't happen that often. Eclipses, yes, but not total eclipses. They will pass through the United States, especially, just doesn't happen that often. Now, there is such a thing as referred to by NASA as perigee and apogee. Now, what that means is this, according to uh, science, they're telling us that when the moon moves, when it travels its path, it, it's more oblong when it makes that travel, and it'll get further away from the Earth, and then it gets closer to the Earth. When it's further away, it's approximately uh, at an apogee. It's at a distance right then. When it's closer, you can see it much larger. Now, here's something that's very interesting about it. This year, right at the time that we're going to have our solar eclipse, it's closer, so it's going to be perigee when it arrives at that particular time. 
Now, when Israel became a nation, according to the 66th chapter of the book of Isaiah, when they became a nation, it mentioned something back in the Word of God that I think is very pertinent. And I remember when I looked at it and read it for myself the first time. It says, when you see these things, I am about to return to the earth. And I'm paraphrasing when I mention this to you. And uh, uh, I remember the first time that I went to Israel when the archaeologists had dug down at the western wall to uncover the temple stones, which are three tons each in the smallest ones. Isaiah chapter 66, verses uh, 14, 15, and 16 are engraved and had been hidden for 2,000 years. Read it for yourself. Now, here's what I wanted to bring out. Here's what NASA said on the 26th day of June, 2013. It's been about four years ago. The sun and moon appear to be the same size when you have an eclipse because the sun's diameter is 400 times greater uh, and the sun is also 400 times further away. Thus, this makes the sun being 400 times further away from the earth than the moon. And the, moon, and the sun is also 400 times larger than the moon. God so arranged it, my friend, that we can have a sign in the sky that is called a total eclipse of the, as a sign to us in the last days. The last letter in the Hebrew alphabet is called the tov, which means mark or a sign. Keep that in mind if you don't mind. Understand there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet and every one of those letters has a meaning, not like uh, our alphabet, but the Hebrew alphabet is a very precise one and very important one in its meanings. And by the way, the last letter tov therefore means mark or sign. That's why I ask you to remember it. They also do not have a number system like we do. One, two, three, four, five is what we have in our number system. They use the Hebrew letters for their numbers. Like uh, number one would be the olive, number two would be the bait, number three would be the gimel, number four would be dalit, and so on. Did you know that the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet's number value is 400? I found that interesting when you're dealing with this eclipse that is coming up, that at the talking about what NASA had to say about 400 uh, uh, being 400 larger and 400 further away. And I think that's very important. One other thing I want to bring out to you is the fact in the third chapter of the book of Jonah, and Jonah is only four chapters long, verses one through seven, or one through four actually, there are three years before Jonah actually will go to the city of Nineveh God is going to get the city ready for his message. That's very vital and important because I think if anybody, any preacher, Billy Graham or whoever, went to Iran and just started going up and down the street saying, repent, I don't think they pay any attention to him. They probably arrest him. Well, same thing would have been true in Nineveh. It was a very large city. So God's going to get it ready. And how does he get it ready? 765 B.C., there was a horrible plague that hit Nineveh. In, uh, it was followed by a civil war and followed by another plague. Then in 763 BC, there was a huge uh, solar eclipse that went right over Nineveh, starting in Europe. A very important solar eclipse, by the way. And this one let it know, or let th the people of Nineveh know, about their judgment that had befallen them. And right, a cup, right on the heels of this, here comes Jonah with his message, repent. So we could say that the solar eclipses are also signs probably of judgment that's going to come. I'm not saying by that that when we have this one, there's going to be a judgment falling on the United States and so forth. I don't know. I'm just saying that it could be God's way of saying to us, look out, watch, look in, according, looking at the 21st chapter of the Gospel of Luke, Jesus' words of the importance 
of uh, looking up and watching and praying because judgment may follow the eclipse that is taking place and that also that 12th chapter that we read about in the book of Revelation. The Revelation sign, by the way. And did you know that seven years from the 21st day of August, there will be another eclipse that will crisscross, that will go right across the United States again. When the first one, this coming August happens, it will go all the way from Oregon through Carbondale, Illinois, St. Louis, Missouri, Nashville, Tennessee, over to South Carolina. When the other one comes, it will go from the south to the northeast, crisscrossing. And incidentally, that's important. It's going to go right through Carbondale and St. Louis. Why do I say this? Why is that important? Because this is where the fault, the major fault in the United States of America is going to take place that is happening. This is the center point of that fault, by the way, right there. Now they're saying, scientists tell us that we're going to have an earthquake that will hit this part of the world all the way to the... Uh, uh, to Nashville, all the way down into our part of the world and going to the, the Northeast, that fault will take place. It is not so much if it will happen, but when it will happen. We don't know. Could be possible. I'm not going to tell you that every time there's a total eclipse that we're going to have some kind of a judgment. I don't know. But I think it's important that all the way down through history, these various things have transpired. And remember what I told you about the fact that that Tav, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, that it actually meant sign or mark? Did you know that that last letter in the ancient Hebrew, you see there is a difference now. We have an evolving of the ancient Hebrew in today's Hebrew letters, what you look at today when you see them. It was changed from the ancient one, which looked a little different. Tav was made like an X. Isn't that interesting? And when the children of Israel were carried away to Babylon and spent 70 years there, the influence of the Babylonians and everything, they changed it over to the Hebrew letters that we see today. But I thought I'd bring that out. Say, how do we know that? Archaeologists discovered that in the cuneiforms that they uncovered in the 1900s, in the turn of the century over to the 1900s, proving this on these cuneiforms, these cylinders, that they read the history at that particular time. And did you know, my friend, that that one in Europe passed over Nineveh? And are you aware, my dear friends, that in the time of the Turks, same thing happened. There was a total eclipse that passed over Nineveh. Talking about judgment that would befall the Turks that held the Middle East in their grasp. Here's the thing that I want to say in my closing, and that is this that when you look at that part of the world, Nineveh is today's Mosul. And we just saw yesterday, I don't know exactly when we're going to hear this, but just yesterday, well, uh, before I started taping this today, uh, Nineveh or Mosul fell to the Allies. Iraq took it with the help of America, but ISIS is not completely out of the picture. This is a very important area in our day and time. If you want to see more and hear more about this, and I'm stumbling along in my saying it to you today, I hope you're able to get it. Be sure to tune in my program, Journey Through the Bible, and watch it. And I'll be a whole lot more into it at that time, and hopefully explain it a whole lot more. God bless you. We'll see you on Journey Through the Bible. Have a good day.